All right, we're going to talk about energy this video, and it's going to be ways to produce it, and that is going to be that. I'm going to stop talking about what I'm going to talk about now. Okay, so I'm going to spawn a node right now because, you know, you need a node. I'm going to spawn a node here. All right. So there are several different ways to produce energy. One of them is a wind generator. They come in large, medium, and small. They each produce their full capacity in about a second. So the small ones produce 115 per second. That's not really that much. These produce 915 per second, which is, you know, a lot more. These produce 7,315 per second, which is a ton. They're, I would almost say they're overpowered, except for they don't really work in space. Um, so, yeah, off. See, it, it doesn't work in space. However, it does work not in space, and it's pretty damn good. So, yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I like using them, but I don't know how I feel about their rather powerfulness. Um, that's one way. Of course, you probably want power in space, especially if you're going to have a spaceship, or even more so if you're going to have a space station. So solar panels are the answer. Um, if they're not facing the sun, then they will turn off. And I'm going to try to get to not face the sun here. Come on. What the heck? Okay, this is not working because I just had this working a second ago. There we go. Yeah, and then if it faces the sun, like that. Cool. Doesn't face the sun. Cool. All right, so that that's cool. Um, the giant ones produce a lot of power. Um, however, sometimes they don't like go onto the ship straight, so you have to take them off and weld them, which is pretty much the only reason, or not one of the only reasons, is one of the reasons why I favor these circle ones. Because even though they really produce a fair bit less power, you don't have to like worry about aligning them on a ship. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it kind of is after a while. I, I, after you build a bunch of a bunch of spaceships, and you're like, I don't feel like aligning more solar panels. I just want it to work. Um, right, so. Uh, fusion generator. That is another way to produce large quantities of energy. This is, in fact, the best way to produce large quantities of energy. If you produce get one of these huge ones, however you see it takes a bunch of resources, and I'll explain all of those in a second. However, when you turn it on, you can just leave it on for a second without it doing anything. You'll see it produces a bunch of energy. Um, it's not like a consistent amount, to be honest, but it is like that. in that, that last jump, it just produced 13,000, which is pretty good. However, if you leave them on too long, and you don't give them the water and and heavy water that they need then instead what it will do is it will blow up it will be a gigantic explosion you do not want one of these to go off on your ship unless you of course want one of these to go off on your ship uh they come in much smaller sizes than this by the way because this usually doesn't fit inside of most spaceships so that that's a nice size medium that's a bit tall to be honest large is nice because it'll fit inside of like one of these resource bay things and also looks really cool um it doesn't produce nearly as much energy as the giant one, but it is a fair source of energy, and it's better than the solar panels because it doesn't have to be aligned to be facing the sun. Um, there are also these other ones. I don't really like these very much, to be honest, so I, I don't really look at them. Uh, this thing is freaking flipping gigantic, but, um, you know, whatever. It produces a bunch of energy, too. I think they both produce pretty much the same amount, although I believe this the pulse generator is better, but I don't know. I don't use them. Or I don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure. Um... Oh, and finally, the steam turbine. So what this is, is it takes steam, which is a resource, and then it will generate for you energy and water. Um, this is very useful, because if you look at the fusion generator, which I will pull up here, put one of these here, you'll notice it takes water, and it generates steam, and a little bit of water. And it takes heavy water, too. And heavy water is just like another kind of water. There's a generator for that that you use that's like a heavy water electrolyzer, I believe is what it's called. Or maybe it's just a heavy water generator. Um, and what the fusion reactor does, takes water and heavy water and produces steam and water. And then with the steam, you can go over to your steam turbine and take the steam and generate more, a little bit more energy and some water, which is very useful. Because then you sort of just recycle the water that comes from here. And then the heavy water thing, you can use more water for that too. So, you can build a closed system with this, and I believe it actually generates water, which is a little bit silly, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much all the ways to generate energy. Um, I, uh, also, as an aside, if you have the Stargate mod, then there are several other ways to generate energy. So, if you're on the Stargate mod, you don't have to watch now. If you did, don't, and you should also get the Stargate mod, because it's flipping awesome. Alright, so, you have the, you have, of course, your Nakoda generators, which I'm going to have here. Um, you have your Nakoda bottles, which there, and a ZPM. So, 
ZPMs, you can just sort of slap it on top of here and it'll produce a bunch of energy. Nacro bottles, you can do the same thing. Like that. And it'll also produce a bunch of energy. Well, not a bunch. It's like 8,000, I believe. Um, then, if you take one of these, and this, and link it to here, you'll see that they do have a little bit of their own storage, so I'm just going to use that. Um, right, so when you turn this thing on, it produces some energy per second. That's not, not great. This one produces a fair deal of energy per second. However, oh, also it slows down for some reason when it gets as close to the maximum capacity. Um, so I'm just going to spawn myself a battery. I don't know why that is, but whenever it gets close to the to its like maximum amount, it just stops producing in the same amounts. Um, so you see it produces about 50,000 per second, which is, you know, pretty awesome. However, uh, if we just wait here for a little bit while this is going off, I'm going to go to this side of the pond. Um, right, so, uh, other, th and other energy things. Well, there aren't any other energy producing things here, although there are these ZPM hubs, which I'll just go stick around here for a second. Okay, so what this is, is essentially you spawn three ZPMs into here. By just clicking on it, it'll align them perfectly, and then you press use on it, and they'll sort of lower in, look all cool, and this is essentially just three ZPMs. It's not necessary to do this, you could just as easily have the three ZPMs by themselves, but, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your goat. Um, I, I, they do look cool, and then there's the Azure one, or Azure one, I don't, even, I don't even recall exactly. Um, and then there's the SGC one, which looks horrible. Now you see, so there's a message, Necrogenerator overloads in three, two, one. Holy crap, it just blew up! Yeah, it, it does that every minute. Unless you turn it off every minute and let it cool down again. Um, it doesn't destroy props, but it will kill you, which is probably not something you want. So, uh, the easiest way to do this would just be to build a chip to be like, Oh, it's 15 seconds from going off. I'll turn it off until, you know, it's not 15 seconds from going off. Usually, I, I don't remember exactly, exactly what I set my chip to. I think it was like at 10 seconds, like, just to be safe. Um, it'll turn off, and then at 50 or so, it'll turn on again. Um... Luckily, it recharges or cools down a lot more slowly than it heats up, so it's about three seconds um, of cooling down for every one second of like real lifetime that passes. So anyway, thanks for watching about this energy tutorial. See you next time.